The US presidential election is coming up in just a couple of days, but the question is, who's going to win? In this video, we're gonna talk about just that, and I think I have the answer. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I wanted to talk about my speculations about what I see is going to be the likely outcome of the 2024 presidential election. Several months ago, before Biden dropped out of the race, I said that I felt that it was very likely that Trump was going to be uh, the one that was going to come out on top in that uh, matchup between Trump and Biden. After Biden dro uh, dropped out, I actually did a video suggesting that I felt there was a lot of uncertainty uh, that, uh, you know, whereas earlier I felt like you could predict what was going to happen. Suddenly with Biden out of the race and uh, Kamala Harris hadn't uh, been, uh, she hadn't become the, um, the new uh, nominee. At that point, I said that there was a lot of uncertainty. I, I suggested I felt that Kamala Harris was probably going to be the pick, or at least she would be the, uh, the pick of uh, Biden, that Biden would end up endorsing her. But, uh, you know, I didn't really know. And, uh, you know, I made a whole video about the idea of uncertainty and dealing with uncertainty. And in this video, what I want to talk about is certainty. Not because I'm certain about what the outcome of the election is likely going to be, although I do think that there is a likely outcome. And I'm going to talk about that in this video. Um, but, you know, there's always there's always uncertainty in everything. But where I see that there is certainty is that independent of what uh, or who ends up winning this election, I think there is a certainty of trajectory of our country. And I think a lot of the times people will really uh, invest a lot of hopes and uh, fears in different political candidates. Uh, and I think that's oftentimes unwarranted because the, the figurehead, the leader, uh, you know, generally speaking, unless you have a really transformational leader, which we don't tend to have here in the United States or you know, perhaps in the world, uh, you know, there, it's rare to have a real transformational leader that can uh, inspire people to do things that they wouldn't have otherwise wanted to do anyway. Usually we have transactional leaders and um, you know, they only uh, can go as far as the mandate of the, you know, the people that are around them. That's one of the things that I really liked about the first Trump presidency was that a lot of his agenda was so at odds with so much of the rest of the government that not a lot got done. And uh, if, at the end of four years, I feel I felt kind of like uh, the federal government kind of returned to a, a state that was closer to what it was originally kind of designed to be. Uh, you know, it, 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 depending on which camp you might have been in between, uh, you know, uh, uh, John Adams and uh, Thomas Jefferson way, way back when. But, uh, you know, it, it seemed like uh, the federal government's, um, your role in society kind of shrank because there was so much infighting going on. And I kind of like the, seeing that shrinking of the, uh, the federal government's role, uh, you know, you know, because of the, uh, the inability of, you know, one person to kind of drag everyone else along with them. So whoever ends up winning this election, I think it's important to keep that in mind, that you still have the population, you still have the preponderance of the people that are in government, and one particular figurehead only has so much real sway in terms of actual policy and actual changes that we're going to see. Um, you know, a, a real quick example of this is just uh, the idea of environmental policy and climate change. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times people will have like, you know, people on the left will have demons on the right. You know, they, you know we could just save the earth if it weren't for this one, you know, Ted Cruz is a, <laughs> a common uh, go-to for this. You know, if it just, if it weren't for Ted Cruz, we could, you know, get the, uh, the climate change uh, legislation that we want uh, put through the system and you'll know, be able to save the world, uh, you know, but it's just it's Ted Cruz that's, that's stopping us. But the reality is that, you know, the, the issues that we're facing uh, with the changing climate, uh, you know, whatever is driving that, and I personally think that humans contribute to it, uh, you know, we're not the major contributors, certainly the sun and geological processes are the major contributors to uh, you know what determines the climate but humans have a role in the mixture of the gases in the uh, in the atmosphere and the atmosphere plays a role so if the atmosphere plays a role and we play a role in the atmosphere then you know we indirectly uh, play a role in the climate but whether we do or we don't um, if we were going to be uh, creating changes that uh, you know would actually have some kind of an impact you know, it's not the Ted Cruz's of the world that are preventing those changes from happening. 
what's preventing those changes from happening is the reality of what those changes would entail. You know, someone like myself, uh, I live in a house that is, uh, I promise I'm getting to my presidential um, uh, prediction here in a moment. Uh, you know, I live in a house that's off grid. I've got solar panels all over the place. I'm really uh, judicious about where I use electricity. I try not to waste things. I'm always trying to recycle things. Uh, not in like I bring it to the recycle station, but like repurpose, reuse, you know, keep things out of the waste stream, you know, get the maximum value out of every bit of everything uh, to have the smallest kind of footprint that I can on the earth. Um, that said, you know, people think that I'm kind of extreme in, in, in that regard, uh, but D despite that, yeah, I think I did the math at some point, and it would still take somewhere between two and four Earths to sustain everyone on the planet, you know, even at my level. Uh, and most people, you know, balk at the idea of even living at the level at which I live at, you know, where it's like, ah, I can't be bothered to like worry about, you know, whether I have sun hitting my solar panels in terms of whether I run this blender right now. I just don't, I don't want to think about that kind of stuff. The, the changes that would be required for everyone to really reduce their footprint to a point where, uh, you know, it could actually make some kind of a difference in terms of the, you know, the gases that we collectively as a society release into the world. The changes would be so um, horrifying to most people that it wouldn't matter if all the Ted Cruz's of the world disappeared and it wouldn't matter whether everyone in government was a, a Kamala Harris. Uh, if at that point uh, people were untethered, it's like, we can finally do what we want to do. Once they started doing it, <laughs> there would be such a huge revolt from the population that wants to virtue signal and wants to talk about all the wonderful things that they want to do, but they wouldn't actually want to do a lot of those things. And that goes both ways. I use the climate um, and uh, ecology uh, kind of uh, example uh, because I think it's, um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty easy to wrap your mind around. But that is the case in so many things in our, our politics. We've got the left and the right and the right always, yeah, this is my right, and the right always knows that they can, they can really go out there because you know, the, the, the left is always going to kind of pull them back a little bit. And the, and the left, in the same way, knows that they can go crazy with the statements of like, I wish we could do this, but, you know, because they know that they're going to be pulled back to center. There's only so much that can be accomplished given the people, you know, the, the populations of the world. And while, you know, a leader uh, can inspire people, and has the ability to do that to some degree, you really have to take into uh, account the reality of the actual people. Uh, and uh, you know, politicians know that there's a history. If you just if you go too far out there, uh, you know, people end up revolting against you. So whoever ends up winning the presidential election, what you really have to look for, or what you really need to look at, is what is the general trajectory of our society? Because that is the way that you can really predict where the future is going. It's not about the rhetoric of what this person says or that person says. Because, I mean, honestly, half the time, if it's even half the time, the, you know, the politicians, uh, you know, say one thing and they end up doing another anyway. So, uh, you know, it's really not important who is in the office. Um, that really just gives you the flavor. <laughs> for your society you know, about like, you know, this, well, this is, or this is our packaging, uh, so, so to speak. You know, w the direction of where the society is really going is determined by the masses, by the mob. Um, and that's going to determine whether it is Trump or Kamala Harris, you know, where the trajectory of our society is going. What are we as a society willing to tolerate? What are we as a society not willing to tolerate? These are going to be the questions that are driving policy going forward into the future. You know, what are the, the, the boots on the ground reality? Not who is the, uh, you know, who's the cheerleader. Now, who that cheerleader is, my prediction at this point is I think it's probably going to be Trump. I think that Kamala Harris is probably going to win the popular vote because, uh, you know, she has a lot more support in high density population areas. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the Electoral College, the way that we elect people here in this country, it seems like it's probably going to tip in Trump's favor. Uh, and, you know, what does that mean? Uh, and, and again, I say that, but it's still, I mean, these, these margins are so narrow. Would I be shocked if Harris wins? No, not at all. <laughs> Will I be shocked if Trump wins? No, obviously not. That's the way I think it's probably going to go. But, you know, the margins are just so razor thin in any direction. It really could go any direction. And again, like I said, it doesn't really matter that much. But what we do need to be uh, concerned with is what are what will be the reaction of people to what the result is? Because there's a lot of people out there who are not like me and think that this stuff is tremendously important. And it's, uh, you know, who is the president at any given time is really going to determine, you know, the future of where our country is headed. You know, so there are a lot of people that put a lot of stock into it. And how are those people going to react? 
Uh, well, you know, we've seen examples of that. You know, there are people who on both sides have been told that the, uh, the, the opposing political candidate is, you know, a traitor, that the opposing political candidate is going to mean the end of uh, democracy, the end of the country as we know it. I, you know, there have been uh, discussions that Trump will end democracy. There have been discussions that Harris will end democracy. Um, you know, both of them have their merits, uh, but um, the question there is less important than how people are going to react to it. And people are going to react as though it is true that uh, you know this the most evil person of all time has just been elected. Uh, you know, independent of who it might be, and there's probably going to be uh, you know a reaction to that. And we as preppers, that is the thing in the short term that we should really be focusing on is getting ready for that kind of uh, fallout of whatever the uh, the end result ends up being. Now, if you're someone like myself and you live out in the sticks, you know, it's not really going to be a big thing. You know, we, we don't have protests, we don't have riots, we don't have marches going down, uh, you know, our, our streets. You know, even if you go to the main street of this town, uh, you know, there's not going to be anything like that in all likelihood. Where you are going to see problems is in dense, uh, you know, urban centers. And, uh, the, you know, those dense urban centers have a mixture of all types of people. So whatever the result of this election is going to be, and again, I think it's probably going to tip towards Trump, but whatever the re result is going to be, there's going to be an awful lot of angry people. It's going to be an awful lot of scared people. And when people get angry and people get scared, you know, we know where that can lead. And that's why a lot of us prep. So over this weekend, you know, top off any last minute things that you might have. There may be events, uh, you know, following after this Tuesday that, uh, you know, I, I don't think that they're going to, you know, cascade into anything huge. Still in this country, there is an enormously comfortable quality of living, even with people that complain about their quality of living. You know, we're nowhere near to the point where, you know, it's that feeling like, you know, uh, when, when people got nothing, they got nothing to lose. You know, there, people still have lifestyles that they are not willing to just throw out the, the window by, you know, going crazy with protesting. So, um, you know, I don't think that it's going to be insane. I don't think it's going to last forever, but I think there probably are going to be events and it'd be wise to be aware of that. That's it. And thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.